What Arnold is currently rendering here is called motion blur. Motion blur makes is a camera effect uh, from traditional cameras. You have a step a recording in a traditional film, one frame then the next frame, and things which happen between the frames are blurred. That's called motion blur. And uh, in 3D computer animation, there's a patent on that, probably several patents. And uh, one, and the, probably the major one, is by Billy Reeves, as far as I remember. I met him once, and uh, I think he's not a poor man with his patent uh, of motion blur in computer graphics. He is or was with Pixar. Okay, the Wikipedia article gives you interesting insights here. This, for example, is... Um, blurred uh, image. It depends on the shutter uh, length in your pho photography. Here, for example, a dog playing with the with the ball, that's motion blur. This, of course, with a bus in London is motion blur. And here you have a motion blur uh, with a camera which has a shutter speed of maybe several minutes uh, showing the stars. And, uh, of course, this is a, a motion blur as well. And currently, Wikipedia article says this article needs additional citations for verification. Well, everybody can tr contribute and help here. Okay, let's get into that scene, which is really looking nice, isn't it? I think today we start with a letter, not with a pr uh, primitive here. To just uh, for a change, use a letter. And of course, 3D type is useless and uh, really not interesting so let's instead create the number seven here and now I want to scale it down it's very large it has a very nice pivot down there so it doesn't scale from the middle but from down here uh, right mouse click let's give it a better material new material Arnold Arnold surface and click here to see the texture properly and we go to color here base color and click on the checkerboard give it a ramp and the ramp currently goes from black to white uh, let's do it a little bit more colorful so let's have yellow in the middle and maybe red at the very bottom so a very nice 7 here, which we created in several seconds. Mm -hmm. In order to get a motion blur, we need motion. And a very nice way to create motion is using mesh, of course. So mesh is here. And with the 7 selected, you click here. Then you have 10 7s. They're currently positioned in a row and the attribute editor shows you the mesh distribute icon which we covered several times I think in the past currently we have 10 points let's leave it there for now uh, and the linear distribution we go to volume distribution so we have the sevens here now and instead of 10 let's go to 40 now we have lots of them and uh, they shouldn't be ordered that precisely here that's why we go back to the mesh tab and create a random node. Where is it? It's here. Add a random node. And we're mostly interested in the rotation here. You see how they rotate? They rotate randomly in all three dimensions. That's pretty nice. And uh, let's go back to our original mesh, which is hidden currently it sits there but uh, it's hidden but we still can scale it so if we scale it we scale all the sevens here and uh, now we need dynamics that's the last section here and uh, it places um, an object down here below the grid far below the grid and the objects the sevens fall down here and are getting reflected and slowly place themselves on that fictional surface which is not being rendered so um, we want to render it so we go to poly modeling and create a plane 
we can scale it up like this we don't see it currently because it's up there yeah and we can move it down like this from the side view here it's probably more obvious we can place it precisely we click on the arrow um, press and hold the key X which makes it uh, snap to the grid so we have uh, our surface here we can deselect the grid up here so everything is now nice and pleasant um, right mouse click new material Arnold standard surface that's fine now we need a light in order to render the whole thing light sky dome light is always the best light to start with and now we create we go to the top window for example and create a new camera um, click here to see the textures and create cameras camera the camera sits here we want to look through that camera a uh, hotbox by holding the spacebar panels perspective camera now we look through that camera and what we see is we see the the former grid here which we can <laughs> hide again and now we go closer to this uh, object of interest here and since we don't want to move the camera in order to compare the renderings we go to view and we lock the camera so now when I use the alt and mouse buttons I cannot do anything it's locked here let's render it with Arnold this is what we get it's just wonderful I must say I'm still so pleased with Arnold and its soft shadows and its fast rendering algorithms just beautiful um, since we use the default Arnold surface shader here for the for the plane uh, we have slight reflections which are fine for now okay so this is the uh, this is the rendering we have everything is in focus you see no motion blur obviously one way to create some blur would be depth of field and do you remember where that is it is here I won't go into detail now because we have another tutorial about this uh, you go to the camera and you have here under the uh, camera shape um, attribute editor uh, notes you have uh, the Arnold tab and in the Arnold tab you see enable depth of field if you enable depth of field without entering any specific uh, values here um, what you get is let's go back to the camera this is what you get it's uh, still all in focus because you have to uh, play with the parameters here and uh, the aperture size currently is zero if you pump it up to here uh, and now render it again this is what you see it's totally blurred so you have to measure the distance but that's a uh, part of the another tutorial a previous one okay I deselected this the de unchecked it enabled depth of field so this is a blur thing uh, which uh, has to do with the depth of the uh, of the scene which is a camera effect another camera effect as we have seen before is the motion blur and the motion blur cannot be found here it's a matter of the rendering the rendering presets here settings are here so in the rendering uh, settings you have the common tab which uh, lets you enter what kind of image format for example a JPEG uh, you want uh, what kind of quality in JPEG you want what kind of camera you want to render in our case the camera number one and uh, what kind of size the image output should have HD 540 currently we can make it bigger or smaller or enter a value here that's all fine with us and uh, this is a general the common uh, options here for the rendering and here is the Arnold rendering uh, specialities and down here you see the motion blur open it and enable it and uh, I think that's basically all you need let's go back to 
the beginning of the animation and play. It's a, actually a simulation. It has to do with gravity. This is a frame 54 in my case. I want to go back to like frame 50 before they all of them actually touch that surface. But I cannot do that because uh, it's a simulation. I have to rerun it here. And I want to stop a little bit earlier, like here. Okay. Yeah. And now I render it. And this is the dynamic scene I get. So they're all falling down. And uh, the ones who uh, which fall faster or rotate faster are more blurred. For example, this one is in a quite uh, intense rotation this one as well maybe this actually two two sevens but this is certainly one which rotates like this probably up because it bangs down here and it pops up again jumps up and uh, rotates here so we have a massive uh, motion blur here which we can of course uh, reduce by playing with the uh, settings here and the major setting which is of interest here this the keys it, it's a more or less it looks into the future or or behind it's uh, you have to bake the simulation actually in order to use it here uh, which is another topic but uh, stick to the length of the uh, the um, motion blur here if you go to zero there's no motion blur at all so that's the scene we had before so to say and if you um, enhance this to one you get a very strong motion blur most of the sevens now are blurred. I think you can even extend this length uh, by typing in a value of 10 or so to get a very even more extreme value here. That's it for now. So the motion blur is a matter of the render settings here and uh, the depth of field is a matter of the camera settings. Some people complain about the graininess uh, of the motion blur. They mean uh, the thing which is well here behind when the objects are being blurred you can uh, fix this by uh, uh, selecting the camera AA settings and uh, pumping the value up which gives very intense render times it's still rendering it will be rendering much longer here uh, that's the camera AA settings they are responsible for the graininess of the motion blur